It was nearly midnight when the rocket hit our house. My brother's wife was injured and he and his son were killed. The rocket came from the Taliban, I don't know why. It's hard to imagine a city which has suffered more than Kabul. Through 17 years of war, it's endured endless hardship, but today it's facing what may be its darkest hour. Kabul is surrounded by an army of Islamic fundamentalists, the Taliban, committed to its takeover or its destruction. They didn't keep their word. They said they'd target military areas, but now they fire at civilians. The rockets have been falling in this area, one just here. They're hitting a lot of houses. We thought the Taliban were good people, real Muslims. They're not the people that they seem. The Taliban were widely viewed as just a quirky, naive movement when they first came pouring out of religious schools in the refugee areas of Pakistan. But they came armed with much more than just the Quran, fueling accusations that the Pakistani military were providing massive support. Last year, I secretly filmed the Taliban when they took over Kandahar in southern Afghanistan. When someone steals with their hand, it should be cut off. Within days, they began to implement their version of Islamic law. Women were banned from the streets, games and music were forbidden, and amputations dealt out for a random array of offences. Executed TV sets were fair warning that cameras and journalists were not welcome. Last October, in a stunning advance, the Taliban army swept north towards the Afghan capital, Kabul. The city's last line of defence now lies with this man. Ahmad Shah Massoud, the Mujahideen commander whose reputation reached almost legendary status in the war against the Russians. The world was fascinated by the hardy Mujahideen who took on the might of the Russian army and won. Massoud was their most charismatic and successful leader an architecture student who turned scattered bands of fighters in his native Panjshir Valley into an army to match the Soviets. He became known to Russians and Afghans alike as the Lion of the Panjshir. I was given rare access to Masood as he prepares for the battle of his life. Allah. To the Taliban, the moderate Islamic state which Masood fought for and now defends is simply not Islamic enough. The Taliban are narrow-minded people. 
They know nothing of human rights and nothing of democracy. They don't accept any rights for women. In the provinces where they have taken power, they have closed the girls' schools, closed the cinemas, and smashed television sets. They even stopped ordinary games like football and volleyball. They claim these things are not Islamic. Without any real court or hearing, they've started to cut off people's hands and feet. These men were the frontline troops in the West Cold War with Russia. But when the Mujahideen were finally victorious, international interest and funds evaporated almost overnight. Today, Masood and his inner circle stand alone in a war that the world has forgotten. Here it is the difficulties of that to work from here that we got flapped to bring here. Yeah. And we have people getting injured in the marketplace, trying to do shopping, trying to find something to eat. Just a normal, what we would call a normal life. Go out of your house, go shopping, take your bicycle, go to school, and the rocket will hit, can hit at any moment. <laughs> The rocket came and hit the wall, and all the pieces hit me. And this is a shell injury. We went down to the river on our bikes. There were three of us. I was sitting beside the river when the shell landed. Most of the roads are closed, no supplies are coming in. People have a very hard time, so they, they send out their kids to find whatever they can find to heat, to cook, or maybe to sell, and that they step on mines. I went with the other ladies to cut some twigs for the fire. As I hit the bush, it just exploded. I was thrown a long way. These soldiers are fighting with their backs literally to the wall. There is nowhere to retreat. The city's suburbs lie just behind them. What's up here? What is the bitterly cold winter with temperatures as low as minus 20 slowed down the Taliban ground assault that has given Masood's troops an opportunity to dig into camps around the city. The Taliban aren't the first army in history to grind to a halt in the snow. The winter hasn't stopped the rockets, but it has brought Masood about a month to reorganise, and he's using every day like it's his last. Masood is charging from front to front for endless meetings with his commanders, preparing for the coming onslaught with ever-dwindling resources. It's just not enough money. You can see our problem. All of Afghanistan is in this position. If we go to see President Rabbani now to get 138 billion, he can't even pay for 38 billion. 
He says, check with the bank. Twice he's told me, you know what's in the bank. Go and have a look. Can I pay anything from an empty pocket? As long as the government can stand on its feet, we'll be with you. When your enemy is defeated, your name will be in history and your reward will be with God. We'll work without wages. Over the next three days, Masood virtually halved his troops in an attempt to create a smaller but tighter army, the type he had in his Panjshir days. Any soldier without a gun was dismissed, divisions without firepower disbanded. It's like this. Bring to the depots anyone who commands a division, big or small. He must wait there for us. When we see his weapons, then we will pay him accordingly. I'm a generous person. <laughs> With virtually all roads into Kabul closed, food and fuel is running out and prices are skyrocketing. <laughs> Even to a person lucky enough to have a job, this flower may as well be gold dust. Go to Makwaru Inn, my brother. Eleven people poisoned themselves there. They took rat poison. The baker refused the man some bread on credit. He went home and poisoned his children, and then himself. Eleven people in one home. Should I steal or rob? My children are hungry. I'm looking for someone to lend me money. God help me. What we're seeing here clearly is, um, you know, a city of a million people or more starving, starving to death. I mean. There's no electricity, there's no water, there's no sewerage. Virtually every tree that was once on the hills of Kabul has been chopped down. People are burning furniture, chairs, tables. You look here and you see every window has been either broken by direct or indirect bomb blast. I mean, the pock marks of all the bullets and the fighting which just ceased a few days ago. Relief workers like Bob readily admit but the trickle of aid they can provide is just too little for too few. This couple are both blind, she by disease, he by a landmine. Their son starved to death and their daughter was dying when Bob McGregor heard of their plight. But for tens of thousands of similar families, no one comes to help. A man can't leave his home to search for food for his children. People are terrified and frightened. They hear a door bang. They think it is a rocket attack. They've totally lost their nerve. There's more than a million people in Kabul and aid groups estimate that up to half of them are on the starvation line. This food has been airlifted in to break the blockade, but it's only enough to feed 10,000 widows. Many more, who desperately need help, get nothing. Okay, 
They don't call the names of the poor people, we're not on the list. I swear by God, she has nothing to eat. My children are hungry. I have no fuel to warm us. Go to my home and see. I'm blind. My family depends on me. Our home is freezing. We have no fuel, nothing. My husband is very weak. The blockade has been implemented to break the resistance of the people of Kabul. According to the information I have, as the economic siege continues and as the blockade tightens, the Taliban will relaunch their attack as instructed by Pakistan. Locked off from the world and without any major allies, Massoud is scrambling to rearm within the next few weeks. Over the past month, bombed out factories have been converted into smelters turning scrap metal into crude mortars and guns. Bits and pieces from wrecked planes, bikes and cars are putting rusting Russian tanks back on the road. Another chapter in the Afghan tragedy is about to begin. The government will help you with some arms. Raise a thousand men from each of your provinces. You have one month. You'll have one month to prepare your commanders and arrange your base. In one month, your men should be ready to attack. The end of this freezing winter will bring some relief to the poor of Kabul, but the thaw will also bring new mobility to the Taliban army. To most of the world, the prospect of spring brings hope of renewal. To the people of Kabul, it holds a promise of yet more terror and death. Mm -hmm.